For everyone who got the ABH Riviera palette, let me tell you how to say some of the names of the shades. Okay, so um, for the purple, the really nice purple, it's not Canes, it's not Cans, it's not Canes, it's Can, as in where they do the movie festival, you know about that? So like, Can, it's not, it's nothing else, it's Can, okay? And then for the really nice, bright, shimmery teal, that shade is actually so pretty, it is not... Seychelles. It is not Seychelles. It is Seychelles. As in Seychelles. You know, it's not Seychelles. Like, no. Seychelles. Hello darlings, welcome back to my channel. My name is Coralie and today we're going to be doing a review of the ABH Riviera palette. This palette, when I saw it drop, I was like, listen, I need you. And it was very frustrating because I said I was not going to buy any more palettes and um... Lies, honey! Anybody got time for that? Yeah, I felt very betrayed by my own self because I did end up buying it. But um, yeah, so um, this is now the tutorial portion of this review uh, you know of course I'm gonna give you the traditional on the info but we'll skip to that so let's do this okay for the first shade I'm going to grab the shade can and I'm going to um, pack that all into my crease honey so um, right off the back this shade is extremely pigmented and I very much love the tone of this purple. I mean, we all know Norvina is iconic, so I'm expecting only the greatest from this palette. <laughs> By the way, I did take this purple eyeshadow on ABH Cosmetics number 8 brush. It's like a little bit of a flat blending brush, and I'm just gonna go ahead and buff slightly the edges of the purple um, in order to make uh, the shades I'm gonna put close to it blend better. As you can see, I've slightly blended the edges and you can notice a tiny little bit of color departing but I'm not going to reapply it yet because I'm, I am going to put the purple on top but I just thought I'd mention that. So now taking DBH Cosmetics number... There is no number anymore on this brush. It's this little brush right here. I'm going to take the shade Bahamas and I'm going to blend it right um, along the edges of the purple. And um, this shade, I swatched it, and lord have mercy, it's so pigmented, it's actually insane. So now I'm just gonna go right over the edges with it. So I'm gonna go slow, and then I'm gonna build it up. So especially right here, because I don't have much lid space, my eyebrows are pretty close to my crease. I blend the shade up into the brow right here, just because I still wanted to have that roundish shape. As you can see, I am creating the halo, the pink halo, and I'm making it more and more pigmented with every swipe. I'd rather just build up the edge color because I want it to be a little, you know, a little more blended. Also, the reason why I decided to put the purple before the pink is, first of all, I always do that, but also because um, purple shadows have the tendency to patch very quickly, so if you pack them first, they're going to have way less patching. So now taking the ABH brush that did come with this palette, like this one double-ended one right here, I'm going to take this fluffy end and I'm just going to, with no product, blend out the pink, the edges of the pink. Now I'm going to go back with the shade Can, which is the purple, and then I'm just going to, you know, intensify her. Give her some life, but I'm also going to blend her a little more up into the um, crease, the pink, because I want the shades to be very well blended. As you can see, it's kind of patching over here and over here. And I'm not surprised because every single purple shadow does that on me. I know on a lot of people it didn't patch, so I'm really not blaming the shadow itself. Like, my eye just does not take purple eyeshadow for nothing. Like, no matter what purple eyeshadow I use, maybe one day I'll create the purple that works. Who knows? I think ABH really, like, did that with this palette because they literally, like, came out of their comfort zone. So I'm gonna take the shade Sales and pop it right underneath my brow bone. It's a matte white. Just gonna, you know, take that and just blend it everywhere. <laughs> I'm going to take my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop Concealer in the shade 7 Natural and I am going to uh, Halo cut the crease.
I'm going to take my Real Techniques, honey, my Real Techniques square detailer brush. I'm going to take Can, which is the purple shade. I'm just going to clean up this, this crease. I'm just going to wipe my Morphe M224, which I used to cut, and I'm just going to pat the concealer so everything I put on top just like sticks. To do this, we're going to take the shade Mid. Oh my god. Mediterranean. I'm gonna take that really beautiful, it's like a blue icy shade. I love how pigmented and like flaky shades are. I know it's weird to say, but I love how flaky they are because of how flaky they are, you guys. It's just so stunning. Oh my god, I love how it has some like slight pinky glitter to it. I don't think you can see it, but it has like a pink glitter to it and it's really beautiful if you ever do your foundation before your eyes you can always just bake underneath and swipe the big after like it's really not that difficult um it all depends on what you're willing to do you know this is stunning but we are going to take the shade at seaside right here which is kind of a grayish pewter color and i'm going to put it on the very center of my halo eye Ooh, i like this like, I can see all the dimension of the shadow right now. It's really, like, shockingly beautiful. And just because I'm annoying, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of Seychelles, which is this one right here. You know, I'm just, I just want to give it a little bit of a teal hue. Like, nothing, like, it's not that deep. Yep, this is it, honey. This is it. Gaga, you look so good. Okay, so I'm gonna do this eye right here. I'm gonna do my base, and then I'll be right back to finish it all, okay? This whole time I thought I was recording. <laughs> so um, what I'm basically doing is I did my lower lash line where I put the can in Bahamas. So just put the purple and blended it out with pink, same as I did up top. And for my inner corner, I'm taking the shade Inheritance, which is the yellowy gold. And I'm just popping it into my inner corner. Is it raining outside? What the hell? To make sure my inner corners are highlighted, I'm going to take the Ofra highlighter in the shade Rodeo Drive, which is what I used on my face. It's looking very pretty. I quite like this highlighter. I got it in an Ipsy bag. And um, I'm kind of shocked because it's really nice. Okay, so I just put it really in the inner corner just so it can brighten up the yellow. But this is it. Okay guys, so this is the Riviera palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It retails for $59 Canadian. You know, it's it's a palette. It's their standard. It has the same format as the ABH Modern Renaissance. What I like about this palette a lot is that it doesn't have like the velvet packaging, so it doesn't get as dirty as the Modern Renaissance. Let me show you Modern Renaissance. She's not the worst I've seen on the internet, but like, look, you see like the velvet gets dirty and it's, it's fine. It's a beautiful stunning palette. I love using it. Um, and it's not her fault. Sometimes she just, she gets, she gets dirty and that happens. All their palettes are very sturdy and compact, so you could bring them if you need a palette to travel with. And if you just need something really quick, you could just like shut it. Ooh. And it has a pretty nice mirror in it. You get 14 shades in a classic ABH palette. You have eight matte, completely matte shades. So you have all this row here, along with this shade here, which is the white. And then you have all these shades that are not only shimmery, but they're almost like reflective shades. So they're very flaky, so they tend to fall out, but they're also very, just very reflective and very impactful as a shimmer, but they are flaky. So I'm gonna take Palermo, or Palermo, or Palermo, like I don't know how to say it. Like you can see it's a like really flaky shade, but it's absolutely stunning. Let me just try and like give you like, oh my God. I don't know if you can see. You see how it has almost like a more golden orangey undertone and then you get that like pink reflect. I'm gonna take Seychelles actually. I'm just gonna swatch that one here, right here. It's beautiful. It's like a darker blue, but with this like teal undertone to it. Ah, oh, Norvina, you did that. And then I'm going to take the shade Yacht, which is probably the most toned down um, of the shade, but it still has a reflex. So it's a bronzy, but it has almost like a, not a green, but like a grayish green undertone. It's like an antique bronze color. 
and it's really really stunning. Now you're probably asking, but Corley, honey, do you recommend this palette? Well, after the look I did achieve, I do recommend it. The thing, the reason why I haven't bought any of the other ABH palette except for Modern Renaissance is because um Although I do like a good neutral look can be really effective for special occasions, whether it be a wedding, whether it be like a graduation, like depending on the occasion, I believe a neutral look can be very effective. I just myself don't necessarily wear makeup out a lot, so I do prefer more creative looks, looks that are gonna um, challenge me a little more. I like a lot of color because I think it just adds a lot to my face and just adds a bit of like life. And I don't necessarily dress that well, so also my eye makeup really does the dressing for me. <laughs> Can and Bahamas are truly the standout shades in this palette, and I love them both so so much. I think this, I think this is a win for me. If you do not like colorful, I would maybe. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this one much because it does have quite a few colorful shades. If you like more neutral, I would maybe go with Soft Glam or I would go with Modern Renaissance, um, Sultry even. But um, yeah, this is this is for the girls who like color. This is for the girls who like a little bit of drama on their eyelids. And the formula is amazing. They're very pigmented. They can be quite powdery now, I'm not going to lie. But um, I think that for the payoff and the blendability, it's worth it. This purple did patch on me a little bit, but like I said, I haven't found purple that has yet to patch on me, so this is not ABH's fault. The James Charles palette did that on me, the P. Louise palette did that on me, all of them, all of the palettes. If you know you're gonna use the colors, because if you're not gonna use the colors, I'm not gonna ask you to pay, well, I'm not gonna ask you, I'm not gonna tell you to like spend $60 Canadian on a palette. Like it's very, very expensive. That's why Anastasia is a luxury brand. I personally think um, this palette is worth it, but again, I don't have bills to pay. I don't have all of these things to worry about. So, um, it is up to you, the consumer. I do not influence. I just give my outlook on things and give my opinion on the product. And I think the product, if you want to buy it, if you have the money to buy it, is excellent and you should go for it. Don't forget to follow me on all my social media such as Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. No, Snapchat, honey. Only follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I have all the links in the description box down below if you like me, my personality, or the content I put uh -huh, right up on YouTube. Then feel totally free to subscribe to this channel. Also, if I seem a little low energy, it's literally like 11 20 at night. I don't know why I'm still awake. I should be sleeping right now, but um, yeah, I love you guys so so much, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.